And now, more with Dr. James Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell, take us back to when the program first began and the mindset of the CIA and the interrogators who were actually charged with performing these enhanced interrogation techniques. What, what was the belief about the threat to the country? Well, they had ongoing information to suggest that they were trying to smuggle nuclear weapons into the United States. So there was credible evidence to suggest that there was another wave of attacks coming. And we couldn't have it happen. They tried to decapitate us the last time. They tried to destroy our civilization. And people were clamoring to do everything and anything they could that was legal, to take it right up to the line and save American lives, because that's what our government is supposed to do, save American lives. How much pressure did you feel you were under, and how was it communicated to you? Well, there were times, literally, when I was told that I'd lost my spine, that I'd become weak, that I was, uh, must be starting to like these terrorists because I wasn't willing to ramp up the pressure. But you know what happened is, once that information, those complaints got back to the people in charge, they very quickly moved in to, to put into place uh, uh, procedures so that when the, the folks in the field, for example, they put in a procedure so that uh, they wouldn't just willy-nilly start waterboarding people because they were getting a tremendous pressure from some folks to waterboard people that were unnecessary. It was necessary to waterboard them. And so the, the management, the leadership, the people in charge like Jose Rodriguez very carefully took charge of that right away. They, I think the leadership, I think faulting the leadership is wrong. Now, one of the criticisms in the Senate um, report done by the Democrats is that you, you, they, first they claim that you made $81 million on this program, and they claim that one of the problems in having you do it, do the enhanced interrogations, was there was a built in incentive for you to do more. The notion that I personally profited $81 million highlights the way they're trying to distort things. That was a commercial contract, it was let under government law. They put out a statement of work. I thought it was going to be an open bid. We bid on it as an open bid. They made it a sole source. It was evaluated to see whether the costs were reasonable. We made a bid in response to what they asked us to do, and it involved providing a lot of people who were embedded into that organization under the command and control of CIA officers and leadership. One of the other things the Senate Dems say is you were not the right man for the job because you had no experience. They, they make it sound like you are basically a, a hack who didn't know what he was doing, who was asked to start waterboarding these prisoners despite the fact that they say you, you had no experience in waterboarding and you hadn't undergone waterboarding boarding in any of your Air Force training? Well, the notion that I haven't had the, the proper experiences was dispelled by the CIA themselves when they replied to it. They, on page 11 of the CIA reply to uh, that report, they say he had the skills we wanted and listed them. One of the things the Democrats say is that there is evidence that the program did not work, that, that the intel you guys got from these guys in waterboarding them, et cetera, uh, could have been gotten other ways and was in fact in hand uh, despite or prior to those enhanced interrogation techniques. Your thoughts on it? It is clear that that program produced results. It's very easy in hindsight when you're not in the reality of the moment when they don't have all of those pressures to sort of look back from from 2014 and see how the dots could be connected sort of like people did after 9-11 when they second guessed what people were doing in real time you can look back and see and then you could you know pretend that you're cleverer than they are and it's much different going in the other direction and and what i would say is that it doesn't matter what they could have used that you can see now that the smoke is cleared and you've got five years to look at it. It matters what they did use in real time when, they're, when lives were on the line and they were doing the best job they could do. And, this, and in my view, the CIA analysts and the CIA targeters are incredible. And to do this, to besmirch them, uh, is... Be, I think beyond the pale, you can tell it irritates me. What, what about, 
Well, let's just let's just go back to, for example, the interrogation of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. How does it work? I mean, you, you I've heard you describe oh, okay, it as okay, a, as a good I, cop, bad cop scenario. Can I you, did can describe it as a good. It? The bad cop goes in there and induces, uh, uh, you know, f you know, fear and panic, say, with the waterboard, and does it in such a way that the the, the person wants to avoid the waterboard the next time, and. As you're ending that session, you say to them, the next time we come back, we're going to ask you about this. Take the time that you have, pull yourself together, give some thought to this, and if we can discuss this the next time, this won't happen again. And then, like many people who have uh, uh, phobias, and that's just an analogy, we're not saying we induced a phobia, but like many people who have phobias, of, like dental phobias, the closest you, closer you get to your dental appointment, the more you try to get out of it, right? And so that's the point in which the person begins to provide information. And if they begin at that point, there is no mention of enhanced interrogations in that intel because they weren't used. You don't use them. Mm -hmm. So the point was to uh, shift the person's priorities with the bad cop so that they engage with the good cop to avoid this other thing. It wasn't to stand there over and pour water and say, tell me where bin, uh, bin Laden's courier is. You'll get all kinds of crazy answers like that. Mm -hmm. You know, when they, when they say you can force a person being waterboarded to say anything, that's absolutely true. You ask leading questions and you hurt people and they will say anything to get it to stop. But that's not what the CIA did. That's not what I did. Was it torture? Not in my mind. If it was torture, I would be in jail. This thing was investigated over and over and over. I was told by the highest law enforcement agency in the land that we were going to walk right up to the edge of the law and that all the things that we had, had uh, 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 included in that list were legal. So, in my mind, and, and I know there's this controversy did, but, about whether... Did, it, did, it, did, it, say, did it feel like torture when you were doing it? You know what, ma'am? It felt like I was doing my duty. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I wasn't thrilled by it. I found it repulsive at times, but I sucked it up and did my duty to keep people from dying.